Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and today we are looking at the Starfarer family. Technically, there's two. There's this, the Starfarer Gemini, which is the militarized transport, and then there's the standard Starfarer. Now, th with this Starfarer, of course, you do have that missile launcher up in the nose, but that can be, once again, swapped out for the fuel intake, whatchamacallit, whatever it's... Whatever it's supposed to be, the thing that you use to draw in planetary gases or hydrogen, whatever, and then process it into fuel to use it to refuel other people's ships. Now, when we saw the CitizenCon presentation recently, I think that was more or less probably a wake-up call for some players out there who maybe still didn't fully realize the scope and the scale of what's going on in the Star Citizen universe and how big things are going to be and of course the need to have fuel to traverse these vast distances and maybe you're not always going to be in a position where a gas station is right around the corner or perhaps you're heading off into hostile space where chances are access to fuel isn't going to be as easy as you would like it to be. Now this is where the Starfarer family come in because currently when you want a ship that can go out, harvest gases, process it into fuel and refuel your ships, the Starfarers are currently the only game in town. Now the Starfarers can also carry cargo. So you can replace the fuel drums on the outside and of course you've got this interior storage space which you can use to store standard cargo but in the end it's also a refueling vehicle which is something that nobody else has currently in game so if you're going off on a deep space operation and you don't want to be dependent on a fixed fuel source you want a fuel source that comes with you the starfarer is the only ship and luckily, if that uh, operation happens to be military in nature, there is a militarized version of the Starfare, which is currently the Starfare that we're touring right now. Now, one thing you may note about the Starfare, and this is one of, in my opinion, the downsides of this ship, is that the interior is a little bit confused. It has a layout that uh, is reminiscent of uh, certain drawings, <laughs> certain famous drawings, and uh, it definitely lives up to it if that was indeed its inspiration because finding your way around the Starfare is kind of a nightmare. Now you might say, that, oh, it's not really a big deal. Once you've been around on the Starfare a few times, you get used to it. And I mean, I personally do not own one. This is a loner for another ship. And so as I'm going around and exploring it, I, it's often this is like the first time in months that I've been on it. So I'm going, oh, OK, here's the rear turret. Well, uh, how do I get to the captain's cabin again? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get used to it. I'll find it. And, you know, after a few days flying around in this thing. Yeah, sure. I could have it all figured out. But there's another part to that, which is having such a confused interior with so many spaces and seemingly walls that we can teleport through okay um is that when you're trying to get around to get things done within the ship it just makes it that much more difficult now of course this was designed with a certain amount of uh, fps level inspiration which at face value may have been a good idea to some but largely it, it's not really the way you want to build things out because it has no real flow to it it has no logical feel to it like if you get into a caterpillar you can run up and down through the caterpillar you know exactly where you're going every time and it's not a confused and convoluted path whereas on the starfare it's kind of a nightmare to get around in this ship and especially for a new player stepping onto it, it's just, where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? Where do I keep this? Where do I keep that? And a lot of these things seem to be kind of scattered in different far off corners of the ship that you have to negotiate this central Escher-esque maze to get to. And in general, that is the downside of the Starfare. Now, 
there's a lot of great things about the star fair but that is the downside and of course you know we have to look at the ship warts and all now one of the strengths of the star fair is especially in the military model but even in the civilian model is this ship is very well protected and you know yesterday where we were talking about the reclaimer a lot of its larger weapons fire in a forward firing arc so it can bring a lot of those weapons to bear it has you know chin guns or cheek guns on either side of the cockpit and a large turret on top with two smaller turrets to defend towards the rear it has a very strong forward armament it can bring a lot of those weapons into that one cone of activity and fire them at the same target giving it a little bit more impact and that makes it a fairly strong ship not exactly the ship that you want leading your charge or leading your assault but definitely not a ship that someone can look at and say oh this is going to be a pushover a smart pilot in a starfare can obviously really mess up somebody's day if they think that it's just going to roll over and play dead for them so why is the starfare so good well you get that refueling capacity it's the only game in town as far as that goes but all these fuel pods can be replaced with cargo pods so you can go to straight cargo hauling if that's what the situation requires or perhaps you can split it and go half and half so that's a lot of flexibility and that's also probably a very needed role in your fleet in the star citizen universe if you're playing a part in a larger fleet that's definitely a role but this central cargo area can also serve another purpose as well now if you were paying attention when i first walked on the ship you'll note that i used the ramp to get up the ship and look at the size of this cargo bay you could easily fit a couple of ground vehicles in here and you have the ramp to get them down onto the ground with so you could use this to drop off a couple of heavy vehicles and supplies to ground forces as well this is a very flexible ship and the fact that there's a militarized stronger variant it kind of really puts this ship in a class all its own above many other ships in the star citizen universe yeah it does have that confused maze-like interior which is quite unfortunate but that broad spectrum of abilities that it has where it can be just a straight cargo hauler but it can also transport ground vehicles it can also transport fuel and resupply fuel and generate fuel for a fleet on the move that's a pretty unique combination in fact it is a unique combination in the star citizen universe and it's why the starfare is such a good ship when you step back and you look at the scope and the scale of the star citizen universe what's planned and what they want to build out one thing is immediately obvious i mean when you look at this this is just in orbit around one planet one planet amongst many planets in a star system amongst many star systems and we've seen the distance and the time it takes to travel now between these planets one thing is inescapable is you're going to need fuel to do that and having a ship like this around maybe it's just to help make you know mitigate expenses while you're traveling around being able to generate and process your own fuel but if you're operating a large fleet and fuel isn't available to you where you are being independent is something that realistically only this ship provides now i've done a ton of videos talking about all the ships in the star citizen universe their strengths their weaknesses my likes my dislikes all of that but in the end all of these ships are unified by one thing they require fuel to operate and the only ship that can currently go out harvest process and deliver fuel is the starfarer one thing though if you do end up captaining the ship make sure you've got everything you need with you when you leave your cabin because if you get all the way down to the bridge and then suddenly realize you forgot your space gloves or your space helmet you're really gonna hate the walk all the way back up through the maze to find your ship anyways that's the show for today i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching